Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're doing top five skill champions and Marvel concept champions. And the last video was science, and we're gonna be doing like in order of like the class wheel, like science and skill beats science and mutant. So mutant will be the next one, but this one's skill. And this one's a lot easier to do than science. Science is very competitive, but I think other than maybe like a few, I mean, the top five I'd think I think are pretty. Like, they've earned their spot in top five. I don't think many people can argue against that. So, if you have a different top five list, let me know. But, in number five spot, a very, very new character. But I think, if played right, she's number five on the list. Um, Squirrel Girl. So, this character is very new. And, m maybe giving her a few extra months to see if she's top five would be smart. But I think, after reading her stuff, just with the damage she has, just alone, and the... Tiny bit of utility she has. I still think she's better than pretty much all of the skill characters um, underneath her. So what makes her good is when she's awakened, which you kind of want her awakened if you're your player. She has 40 hits in the combo meter when she starts, and she plays very differently than other characters. So the way you want to play her is get up to a 40 hit combo. You build up bleeds because she gets bleeds naturally from medium and light attack. Um, where is it? Yeah, right here. So they apply, apply a bead on mediums and I think some lights. And you can get critical bleeds, which last super long. Basically, what you want to do with her is just build up a crap ton of bleeds. And then if you have 40 hits in the combo meter, then you have attack to detonate or special to or any special, just anything that knocks him down, I think. When you activate the special attack, all the bleeds will detonate. And the damage is crazy on this. Like, the detonation is insane. And so she has two modes. I think when the scroll's on her and when the scroll's not on her. Her friend, like, Tippy, I think it is. And... When it's on Squirrel Girl, she can purify all non-damaging debuffs, which seems useless, but there's like a few lanes in 6.3 that I think this would be very good on. Like there's one void I can think of, for example, with that has, I think it's called a Close Encounters node, which is like every time you get close for a certain amount of time, it puts a weakness on you, and the void has such high attack, it like just takes so much damage off you, and it's really annoying. But with this, she can just take it off, and that might be good. And she has a crap ton of block proficiency, or 1,133. Also, in the squirrels on her, um, the hits, like when you hit the opponent, I think it, um, it, it does two in the combo instead of one, so that's really good. And then when it's on the opponent, so if you have a 40 hit combo, which is pretty much what you're going to do, you'll heavy attack, and all the instant bleeds will detonate, dealing a massive amount of damage. And she'll also put a debuff on them, preventing evade and auto block. So, Squirrel Girl, she doesn't have that much utility, but just the raw damage itself already, in my opinion, makes her better than most of the characters in the skill class, because to be honest, the skill class, other than like the top few, are, like it's pretty underwhelming and pretty average, to be honest. So yeah, that's number five. Now we're going to number four, and for number four, we got our boy, Del Suit Spider-Man. This guy, I love him. He, um, I want to rank five of him. He's amazing for prestige and one thing i like about him is awakened his awakened ability unless you're going for prestige is not that useful or not or not that needed is what i mean it just i think makes your furies a little bit stronger or something like that so basically what this guy has is he has a few three pre-fight abilities and the enervate one is pretty much useless you'll never really use that i don't think it's pretty weak but the other two the slow and the flashbang. So for most fights, you just want to use the flashbang, which basically when you activate it, um, you just hit really hard. It's on me. Um, so what you want to do with him is you got five charges, I think. Okay, when you try to fight five web cartridges, and when you land a light attack, it puts one on them. So the pretty much the rotation for this guy in a normal fight is light attack to get the first cartridge, and once you have the cartridge, you light attack again with another combo. And well, you have to end the combo with a light, is what I mean, not just one light attack. So you end the first combo with a light, you get the car uh, thing on them. You do another light attack, and it'll give you a fury. This fury is massive. And then while you have, and then you also have this evade thing, which is on you, which it doesn't trigger off parries, which is really good. But when you have it on you, you I think you have a 70% chance to evade basic attacks when not blocking, so not parrying it basically. And if you don't, wait, where is it? Uh, a special one yeah as long as you have the spider sense up and it's not on cooldown when you use the special one it'll place a massive cr uh, cr uh, what's it called 
precision passive. The precision and fury are both passives, not buffs, so it can't be nullified really. And they both last super long, and every time you um, trigger dexterity for uh, the um, fury and precision, both um, pause for 3.5 seconds. So you can keep both these up for like pretty much infinitely if you play well. And basically, that's just crazy damage. And But then, what makes Stealth Spider-Man good is one of his um, pre-fight abilities is called Web Foam. And when you do the light attack thing to place the uh, web cartridge, it'll place a slow debuff on the enemy, which won't let him evade or gain unstoppable for 12 seconds. And this, and he also cannot miss. And while they're so that he also can't miss. So this dude can, I think he's one of the only characters right now in Abyss that can just like ignore the unstoppable at the end of the fight after you get the 240 hit combo mark or whatever it is. And you can, there's already been like 800 combo one shots on Thing in Abyss, like the first fight. And his damage is just overall insane, even when he's not using his damage form. So, Stealthy Spider Man, definitely worthy of the number four spot. Now we move on to our number three spot. It's Blade. I mean, you guessed it. Blade. This guy, I've had him since like the beginning of 2017, I want to say. Could be 2017 or 2018, I don't remember. But I've had this guy for so long. I know I'm like I know him like the back of my own hand. This guy, even though he's so old, he is still a beast and can put in work with his um, what's it called? Danger sense mechanic, which is basically, or is it danger sense? Against dimensional beings, danger sense activates, which reduces the opponent's ability accuracy by forty percent. This is really good for fighting like Mephistos, Dormammus, Magics. And this guy, he's a beast. When you verse a dimensional being, his damage skyrockets and he hits really hard. And then when you mix that with the either Mephisto and Dormammu or Ghost Rider synergy, so the Ghost Rider synergy synergy um, expands danger sense to all villain champions in the game. So like Yellow Jacket, Ultron, character, just anyone that's a villain. And then also a really good ability is Mephisto and Dormammu, which it just goes to all Mystic characters. So there might be some mystics that aren't um, dimensional, but he'll still get it on. So if you run either one of these synergies on him, it'll make him a beast. He's already a beast without it. And his bleeds, on his, every time you parry, you can put a bleed on them. Special one puts two bleeds, and your special three, or special, special one puts two bleeds, and your special two puts a lot of bleeds. He benefits a lot from the deep wounds mastery. But when he gets the bleeds on, he slowly gains power over time. For every stack of bleed, he gains 7% of a bar of power every second. So when you have like 3, 4 stacks of bleed on the enemy, his power is just skyrocketing. And it's like really quick 5. And another thing that makes him amazing is awakened ability. When he's below 70% health, you can swipe back and hold block. And for every second you're holding block, it'll cost 25% of a bar of power. But you can recover, like mine right here, single 180 is like around 1500 health per sec uh, per tick and this is like or per second and you can mix this with one of the masteries that makes you heal faster and this guy or heal more and this guy can save you hundreds of potions like just so easily without even like and a special three is a 70 percent chance to stun and it inflicts three sacks of bleed so basically if you ever have like a massive villain opponent or a massive mystic Blade can normally just destroy the fight and make it like cheese, like not even trying. Now we move on to our number two spot, and I don't have this guy as a five star. I would love to get him though, because he's amazing. But number two and number one could easily be debated, and I know it'll cause a lot of controversy. But I'm putting Nick Fury at number two. For me, Nick Fury, this dude just is so good <laughs> so basically how, what you want to do with this guy is you need to have him awakened if you want to see like the crazy damage and the one thing i like about him is he only needs to be at sig one just sig one just needs to have the awakened ability which makes him get a second life so when he dies he comes back in the second form and he degenerates down to 30 percent health so you have a 30 percent health in this form it's a small amount but it's like i like the play style it's like balls to the walls it's like you're low at health but you hit like a truck and if you want this guy to be good, also you need to have five and five deep wounds. That's just you just need to. And basically, how he works 
is just a light attack. Like, you'll do a five combo, medium, light, 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 and then instead of ending with a medium, you end it with a light, and he puts on this massive light bleed. How much does it do? It's a three star. You end it, it is 200 damage over one second with as a three star, but then you add the um, deep wound to last way longer. But this is a three star. You don't really see the effect, but as a three star, this guy is like stronger maxed out like five five deep wound. he can kill fights faster than like a lot of five stars which is kind of sad but what makes this guy good is he has where is it um okay so his tactical charges when he throws a special one in his second life he has eight tactical charges and what you want to do with this guy is get to two special ones you have 16 charges so at five charges he can't be missed or evaded so you go against an invisible one he just eats her it's not even hard. Um, at 10 charges, Nyx Purify effects now target all debuffs. So, his Purify effects, that's like when he dies, I think. I'm not going to lie, I don't really know what this 10 charge thing is. I've never even really seen it. I don't really know what it does, but <laughs> that's not what's important with this character. What's important is at 15 charges. The 5 charges and 15 charges don't make him sick. At 15 charges, so you throw 2 special ones, you have 16 charges. He becomes fully unblockable. So you can just hit through their block. He's insane. He like doesn't need he just he just hits straight through their block. He feels like you're playing Aegon at nine and nine combo. Except you only need to throw two special ones to get here. And what is it? At twenty charges, they're all removed and replaced with a fury. You don't really want to do this because keeping the unblockable up is way better. So basically in a normal fight, you just want to do the two special ones and then use your special twos over and over again. And once you do that and you're in a 30 percent health phase he hits like a truck he i mean it's just disgusting how hard this guy hits and another thing that makes him amazing which we figured out now didn't really have too much of a use i don't think until the abyss but in his second life he cannot be stunned so there's an abyss fight a bit um invisible woman which is every time she reaches a bar power you put she puts a like power sting on you i think it's called and you either use your special and take some damage, or when it fades, it stuns you. But since you stun a lot, he's perfect for that fight. Oh, and I didn't mean decks out of him. And another thing that makes this guy great, which is he just brings so much to the team. So when he, so when he's alive, all your champions get, all hero champions get a ten percent attack rating. So this is already just a ten percent booster basically with him on the team. And if he's dead, it's twenty percent. But what makes him insane are pretty much these two synergies right here. You put him and, um, what's it called? Deadpool X-Force or Goldpool or Deadpool on the team. And in the start of every fight, he will take away your, either a bleed, poison, or shock debuff. Normally, if you're running two sides, it's always the bleed first, which is pretty much better, honestly. And it'll heal you for 10% of your max health over three seconds. So you use this synergy with Aegon and him in the Labyrinth. I mean, you, you can just get a heal in the beginning of every fight or even just quest in general. And then you mix it with Quake synergy. I mean, you could use Ant-Man, but Quake's a way better champion. And if Nick's alive, so you want to have Nick alive for this synergy. You start the fight with three evade charges. So if you were to get hit, you would evade. So you, you put, I don't know, gold, if you have him, gold pool and Quake and Nick Fury in a team, crazy synergy for the rest of the team. And... The good thing is, if you don't have the Restoration Kit, at least the Quake and Nyx Energy, all your champions get an evade char three evade charges in every fight. And it's like, Quake and Nick Fury are both amazing champions, so it's like, they're not like a detriment to have on the team. So yeah, Nick Fury is just an insane character overall. He's banging really close. But for the number one spot, I mean, you just it's hard to be better than my boy, Aegon. I mean... You've seen Aegon gameplay. This guy is a freaking force of nature. This guy has some of the highest attacking game, I think. Um, but that's not what makes him good. So with this guy, you really want an Awakened and a high sig. Mine's only at 121, which is at the end of every fight, he at whatever your combo was, say you had like a 100 hit combo, he'll carry over 61.6% .6 of his final combo into the next fight. So if you have him at dupe 200, sig 200, it's 75%. So if you end a fight with 100 hits, you'll bring over 61 hits the next fight. I don't know if it rounds up to 62 for mine, but... So he's really made for, like, massive pieces of content. And basically, he starts the fight at zero crit rating. But for every hit, you increase your crit rating by 32, pretty much. 
So after you're at like, so when you're at your nine to nine hit combo, you basically crit in every single hit. And at five hits, crit, your crits have 40% chance to shark off a debuff. Uh, 20 hits, this is also kind of useful. Uh, Aegon activates a combo shield for five seconds and a 45% chance to become unstoppable. So if they evade you like early on in your combo, you have a, you get a combo shield, which is eh, a little useful. 30 hits, Aegon can strike with critical hits through block, so it's really good. 50 hits and up is when like it really like starts ramping up how like his usefulness. Before like 100 hits, he's not that good, but 50 hits when you charge a heavy attack, you get one second of an unstoppable, and it's a passive, so it can't be like nullified or sign. And assist cannot be activated while it's on cooldown, but there's a bug going on where he can just keep activating it, which it benefits the players, but I'm fine with it. So you, what you can do is when you get hit with Aegon, you activate like all your furies, like you activate six furies if you're at a high combo. So what you can do is you can heavy attack, they'll hit into you, and you counter with the unstoppable, and then you hit them back, and you'll have the six furies up, and for a few seconds you'll have this massive period of damage, because the furies are crazy. So it's like a suicide tactic, but like, it's so worth it, the damage is insane. 75 hits, opponents have 85% block proficiency, so your crits through blocks just start doing a crazy amount of damage. And then after 100 hits, this is when he becomes pretty much like god mode. Um, your crits have a 100% chance to shrug off a debuff, so you bring him into a fight, and you already said a 100 hit combo. Fully debuff immune. Fully debuff immune. You can counter power lock, special one, like, special one power lock um, nodes I've found. You can counter literally any debuff they put on you in the game. 150 hits, critical hits, um, grant 0.75 seconds of true accuracy. So you can ignore auto block and evade. So he's evade counter and auto block counter. Did 200 hits. Um, Crits ignore 100% of the opponent's physical resistance. Yeah, kind of useful. 300 hits. Um, every crit gives you a fury, and these furies are really good and massive, so it helps damage a lot more than it already is. 500 hits. Um, critical hits cause opponents to suffer n minus 100% reduced defensive ability accuracy for his next hit. So basically what this means is if you want to fight like Labyrinth, um, what's it called? Wolverine X23, you, you hit her with a crit, her next hit, she has a 100% chance to not trigger the regen. So he can he can destroy regen fights like Re um, Lab uh, Realm of Legends, Wolverine, and stuff like that. 750 hits. Critical hits gain 1.5 seconds of unstoppable and combo shield. So every crit, you're getting an unstoppable buff and a combo shield. So, you know. And then at 1,000 hits, um, when you crit, it makes your next hit guaranteed to be unblockable. So you're basically, since you're critting like every hit at a thousand hits, you're basically fully unblockable, which makes him god himself at that point. You're fully unstoppable. I mean to evade, auto block, I mean to all debuffs in the game. You hit like a truck, minus 100 reduced ability XP. Like this guy like is so beast mode in. And his special two puts like a massive bleed debuff on the enemy. The special three puts down a stun and i don't know how long it is but i know if you can get a 22 hit combo in you can do normal six hit combo and then you can do a four hit combo shortened and then another six and then another six you can get 22 hits in total he just is amazing like this guy right now best chair best character in the game for abyss and labyrinth of legends i mean he can't do every fight he can do every single fight in labyrinth but he can't do every fight in abyss but he's still the best option for abyss so this character is pretty much timeless, and I don't think any piece of content will add that's like, like whatever the next thing is after Abyss, probably gonna be the number one character for two, unless they do some weird node to screw him over. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and this list. Comment, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and comment down below what your list would be if you have a different one. And, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Get a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.